Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to a new video. This is gonna be part two of my series of what a NAS is and all the fun things you can do with it. If you haven't watched part one of this series, I'll leave a link up below in the card and down below in the description. Be sure to watch that first so you know what a NAS is. And in this video, I'll be talking about how to choose the right NAS for you. Also, for all those people who are new to my channel, a big welcome to you. Be sure to press subscribe down below so you get alerted every week when I release a new video. All right, so at this point, you know what you wanna use your NAS for and you know approximately how much storage you're going to be using over the next few years. The third step is really choosing the model of NAS you want to get. Now for this video I'm going to focus on the Synology brand but there are quite a few manufacturers you can choose from. I chose Synology because their software behind running the NAS is really really good and they have really good high quality products. So if you go to their website, there's a whole product page with a bunch of different options to choose from. The first thing you should know is the different types of NAS that Synology offers. So right away, I can tell you that the FS and XS series is probably something you don't wanna look at. Those are the two enterprise level solutions. They're meant for businesses. They're really overkill for people like you and me. That leaves us with three more options. The Plus series, the Value series, and the J series. Starting from the bottom, the J series is the lowest tier that Synology offers for their NAS. It's very bare bones, but it's also the cheapest. So if you're looking to just store your Google Drive files with not much media or any videos onto a hard drive that you can use as your personal cloud, this could actually work for you pretty well, but don't expect to be streaming anything off of it because it's not that powerful. The next level up is the value series. I'd recommend this section for most people. There are a few models here that are meant for streaming, so you do have that available to you. And there are also other options if you don't plan on using it for media, just for storing files. There's quite a few things to choose from here as well. The next level up is the plus series. Now this is what I recommend if you're gonna be using this for streaming media. It has 4K encoding for all the options and it's meant for processing. The plus series is the highest level consumer option you're going to find for Synology. It's great if you're going to be using this as a primary hub for storing everything. If you're going to be using your NAS for media streaming or for Plex or anything like that, I strongly suggest choosing something in the Plus series lineup. So besides the tiers, you have to know what the names mean as well. When I first saw the options that Synology offers, I was really confused because the names are just so confusing. So let's break this down. The first two letters of the name will tell you what kind of device you're buying. They offer a disk station, which is what most people will be getting, but they also offer a rack mounted option, which is great for businesses and enterprise level devices. But for people like you and me, again, the DS option is what you wanna look for. Keep in mind, they also have a DX and RX model. Those are expansion units. You don't wanna get those at first. You wanna get the DS model first. The number that comes after the DS is telling you how many drives your device will be able to support. So for me, I bought the DS10 19 plus. That 10 is telling me that my device can support up to 10 hard drives. But at first glance, that's a little misleading because the DS10 19 Plus only has five hard drive slots. What they're telling you is if you buy the expansion unit, you can get up to 10 hard drives stored on this device. So technically speaking, I could only put five hard drives out of the box, but if I do want to buy the expansion unit, I could put up to 10. The number after this is telling you what year that your device was released in. So the DS10 19 Plus was released in 2019. You'll also see several options for 2017 and 2018. These are really good still, even though they're a couple years old, these don't really get outdated because they're meant to last several years. And lastly, at the end of the name, you're gonna see which series that you bought. So DS10 19 Plus is from the Plus series. If you bought something from the Value series or the J series, you'll see that at the end of the name as well. The last thing I will mention for Synology is just do a little research of figuring out what your minimum requirements are for your hard drives. Again, when you're buying a NAS, you aren't buying the drives, you're buying the computer that holds all the drives. So you have to buy the hard drive separately. You wanna make sure you buy the right storage capacity because your NAS will only support a certain limit of storage per drive. And also you wanna make sure you buy a drive that's designed for a NAS. And the reason why you have to do that is because regular hard drives are designed for external use, right? You just plug it in once, you unplug it, and you don't really keep it on all the time. In a NAS, this thing is gonna be spinning all the time, 24 seven. So these NAS hard drives are designed in a way where they don't give off as much heat as regular hard drives and they also don't vibrate as much, so they last longer. I personally got the Seagate Iron Wolf NAS hard drives. I'll leave a link for all this in the description below. But again, any hard drive will work, just make sure it is meant for a NAS. And to make extra sure that you're buying the right hard drive for your NAS, if you go to Synology's website, there's a whole page dedicated to choosing your drive and making sure it's compatible with the model that you're getting. And yeah, that's basically it. At this point, you should know why you're buying a NAS, how much storage you wanna put in your NAS, 
and if you're buying a Synology one, hopefully you know which model you want to get. I will leave a few options down below that I think will work for a lot of people. All the options below should work pretty well for streaming media, but I'll leave an option for lower storage and one for higher storage. The low storage option should work honestly for most people. Unless you have gigabytes and gigabytes of movies and TV shows and home videos, you probably don't need something crazy like what I got. But with that being said, if you do have a lot of media like me, I'll leave my option down below as well. That's it for right now. Be sure to press subscribe if you haven't already. I'll be reviewing my DS1019 Plus in the next video. And then I'll also be talking about some really cool things you can do with your NAS, like setting up a Plex server and using it as a backup option for all your devices. So a lot of fun stuff coming. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time.